just say this right now if you can hear the sound of my voice you are worthy because you breathe you are worthy because you breathe you are worthy because you breathe and one of the things the 21st century has brought with it along with this technology, along with all the advancements, along with all the innovations and inventions that seemingly make our lives a lot easier, it occurs to me that mental health, mental illness, feelings of uh, inferiority are on the rise. So when all these things are happening, at the same time, many of us feel isolated, We feel uh, misunderstood in a world that has us in many ways. They tell us that we're fully connected. And I'm saying that because I know somebody this morning woke up needing to hear that you are worthy because you breathe. And this show is for you. Like what what I really wanted to do is talk about our quality of life. And how we can advance the quality of our lives in the four pillars of life. Four pillars of life being our health and well-being, our relationships, our work, our money, and ultimately, most importantly, our purpose and our spirituality. And as I was beginning to like make notes on that, it occurred to me that if... If I don't feel worthy, if I have feelings of inferiority, that having someone having a conversation about certain quality of life, that doesn't even resonate with me. Like, it it, it probably sounds like a different language. And I will probably become disinterested because I don't believe I could ever have a high level or quality of life. And so as I was thinking about that, you know, I was praying, meditating, <clears throat> and it occurred to me that it's like you first, Linnell, you got to pull back the layers of why we don't pursue or even believe we can have a high quality of life. And when I say high quality of life, what I'm pointing to is like, fully functioning at high levels across all facets of our life. In terms of my well-being, in terms of my health, in terms of my relationships, everything is in order. In terms of my career, in terms of my finances, in terms of my purpose, everything's in order. In terms of my walk with the creator, everything is aligned and in order. I probably should have started there because that's the first step, I, I, you know. I remember when I was young, I used to hear that scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. And of course, when you're young, you're going through adolescence, it's hard to act right. <laughs> you're like, man, I got to be righteous to, for my life to go well. Um, and, I, and I guess for some folks who are stuck in adolescence, even if, even if they are mature in age, it's hard to act right. And so the first step really is the walk, the walk with the creator. But I can even, I would even say, I will go as far as this, is that when it comes to feelings of worthiness, that it doesn't necessarily always matter how spiritual you are. Because you run into folks all the time who claim spirituality. And they'll say, I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. 
okay. All right. But my thing is, you know, what's the evidence? You know, where where's the fruit? I'm very spiritual. And then it doesn't even matter if you are religious. You might say, I'm a devout Muslim. I'm a devout Christian. But one of the things that I know, and, and this is a principle that was laid down by the creator himself, is that if you can't see it, if you can't see it in your mind's eye, and if you don't believe it will happen, then nothing's going to take place for you. You can desire all these things, right? You can desire a high quality of life. You can want it all you want, and that's what it will be, a want. Because if you can't see it, if you can't believe it, then you cannot quote me on this. You cannot create it. You cannot create it. Violence, I know, it's all over the news. It just got hot outside. And let me let me uh let me just address it for a moment, then I'm gonna get into these ten reasons that I believe I believe that most of us don't know our worth. Now first, let's be clear that if these young people knew their worth as human beings, as spirits that are connected to the creator, they they would hold themselves accountable. You wouldn't need anybody to hold them accountable, okay? Um, so let me, let me be clear on that first. And many of them are being raised by parents who don't know their worth. And because they don't know their worth, because they have unhealed trauma, because they feel inferior, they have planted those same exact seeds into their children. I don't necessarily agree with investing in prisons when there's a lack of investment in education. I don't necessarily agree with calling out uh, African-American or black celebrities who, who have wealth and telling them that they should be the ones in charge of capital punishment when there's so many opportunities for education, for resources to go into programs that actually teach children, keep, keep young people busy, and more than anything, really make sure that the education systems and schools that we have have the resources that they need. And that in some ways, that in some ways, if the, if the parents aren't doing it, there is some level of a bridge that can be built. Now, I agree with Art in that the parents are first and foremost, and I know most educators that I've talked to have said that, hey, I feel like everything that I do with the child can be erased in one evening. I've heard that. And then, of course, everything I do with the child over, over the school year can be erased in one summer. And I believe that. And so if there's anything we're going to do, I would say is put more resources in education and more resources in parental support in education. Um, but then for parents and for those of us who hear what I'm going to share in the next 90 minutes, like, we have to do a better job of spreading positivity and spreading good words because we will share all the comedy, all, all the, the misfortunate scenes, you know, all the 15 second, 30 second, 60 second reels that have no quality and will change nothing in our lives. We will share all those things, but often we pause to share something that we think is going to stop make, makes people think. We, we, we pause to share those type of things, and we even pause or avoid listening. And we've got to get, we've got to get better. And, and we have to understand that what most, I'm going to tell you this, the one thing that I know that most people who have a healthy mindset, healthy mind, I'm not talking about mentally ill, but healthy mindset, one, is some level of success. Most people want it. Most people have some level of desire for it. And what most people lack is the drive to fight, to receive it, and build it. I tell you, we live in a microwave society. Everybody wants to be able to put their degree in a microwave. 
hit the button for two minutes, pop out with a million dollars. That's what most folks want. Most folks want to skip accountability. Most folks want to want, want to just jump over decisions that were made in the past and and completely move into a new way of being. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going I'm to share these top ten reasons on how to get out of it, but I will, I will say this, that it's not easy. And even if the, anything worth having, I always say it, is not easy. I'm not going to mislead you. It's not easy. What's happening in our community and how we're going to transform that will not be easy. But is it possible? Yes. I believe it with all my heart that if a person is listening to me right now and they have feelings of, of unworthiness and they really, truly want to transform their lives, that if they commit to it, they can powerfully transform their lives and not just transform their lives, but transform the lives of other people that are watching. I believe that. But see, you got to want it as bad as you want some of the things that won't matter a year from now, 10 years from now. Some of us fight real hard for things that don't matter. And what matters more than anything is this life, this life that you have, this moment, and what you're creating. And that's what this show is about. Now, we've all heard the story, and I've done this at seminars. You've seen other people do this at seminars. I'm going to share it right now for a person who feels like they're so broken that this broadcast won't matter. But we've all heard the story, I'm going to my pocket right now, of the, the dollar bill, right? In this case, I got a $100 bill. We've all heard, heard this story that a person can stand on a stage, and, and right now, for anyone who's watching the feed, they can see a $100 bill, okay? And I can say, hey, the fifth caller going to get a hundred dollars and i'm not going to say that <laughs> but i could say that right but what we know is that this has worth in some at some level um based on our society today, today 2022 this has worth it is not worth the same thing it was in 2020 let's be real about that okay but it's worth something and even if i folded it up and put creases in it like this, the fifth caller would still want it, right? Even, even if I took the $100 bill and I balled it up in my hand, okay, the fifth caller would still want it, all right? If I, if I took it right now, if I took this $100 bill and I, I took this, now you see it's all crinkled, and I rubbed the dirt on my shoes, I put it on the floor right now, and I rubbed it into the carpet, and I rubbed the dirt on my shoes into, into this $100 bill. The fifth caller would still want it. And I'm sharing this because often what happens, there's somebody listening right now. You've had levels of trauma that most of us haven't had. You, you've been beat down mentally, you've been beat down physically, you've been beat down spiritually. And, and you feel like whatever I have to say doesn't account for you. And I want you to know that this morning, that if a piece of paper that has the mark of $100 on it can be worth something after it's crumpled, stumped, and torn, that... Because you are a child of God, you will always carry an enormous amount of worth. And whatever's going on for you psychologically right now, whatever it is that you believe right now is a lie, and I, and I want you to continue listening to what I have to say. First reason that I know that most people, that most people struggle with their worthiness is because they do not believe that they have value. They question their value. This morning, right now, if in any way you question your value, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in the workplace, 
whether I don't care where it is right now, folks are going to church and somebody right now is questioning their value. It's an usher who feels like I'm the bottom usher. They question their value. Nobody asked me anything. People don't even ask me for for to get them a seat. They just walk right past me. I have no value. I want you to know right now that that is what in psychology is called a cognitive distortion. Something is wrong. There's a mental illusion that is, that has been created in your mind that is telling you that you are not valuable, you are not worth anything, that you're invisible, and it's a lie. All right, so what is a cognitive distortion? I just dropped two big words on folks. And so let me just slow down real quick. Let's talk about that. A cognitive distortion in many ways is a pervasive mental context. What do I mean by that? Cognitive distortions are biased perspectives that we project onto ourselves and the world around us. This is one of the reasons why black folks don't like to see black folks coming sometimes. Or if I'm the only if I'm the only black one in the neighborhood and I see another black family move in, I'm like, oh, man, here we go. That's you're actually projecting how you feel about yourself onto other people. Now, the question is, why do you feel that way about yourself? Well, you feel that way about yourself because cognitive distortions are irrational thoughts and beliefs that we unknowingly reinforce over time. You might say, Linnell, why would somebody reinforce that? Why would somebody reinforce a feeling of, uh, uh, of self-doubt? Why would somebody reinforce a feeling of lack of worth? And what I'm telling you right now is most of us don't knowingly reinforce these things. These things are reinforced all around us. They're reinforced all around us in the little sitcoms that you watch. Do you know, it's fun, my wife and I, we were watching, we were watching some, I can't remember what the show was. But at the end of the show, it was almost towards the end of the show, I was like, you realize there were no black people? Now, what does that do to you? And see, these are the things we miss. What does it do to you when someone creates a word? I know what it was. It was a, a, a Netflix, uh, it was a Netflix movie. But what does it do to you subconsciously when you watch something where someone has created a world where you don't exist? Especially if you don't notice it. See, I notice stuff like this. I'm like, where, whoa, where's somebody that looked like me? Then I want to know, well, who directed this? Who produced this? Because they ain't going to get my time no more. Right? But this is what happens, right? And we don't, we don't even begin to understand how the subconscious mind works. This is the subconscious mind. I've been sharing this with a coaching group of mine. The subconscious mind is much more powerful than the conscious mind. But most of us put most of the, the focus on the conscious mind because that's what we use. But what you don't understand is how the conscious mind is being used is based on what is sourced and provided to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is watching all the commercials, watching all the movies, watching all the sitcoms. And many times the reason a person doesn't feel they have value is because of what's been planted in their subconscious mind. And this is how many, sub, many cognitive distortions are born. Now, all cognitive distortions are tendencies or patterns of thinking and believing. And so one of the things we have to do is we have to become aware of our patterns of thinking and believing. What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your neighbors? You ever consider that most of the things that you believe about people are nothing more than interpretations? Interpretations that you've built on patterns that have, that, that by the way, are only taking a very small percentage or segment of what they do and don't do, which means you really don't know them. And if you don't really stop and observe yourself, you really don't know yourself. I'm going to get to that. But the thing about cognitive distortions is that most of them are fat, false, and inaccurate. And typically, 
the source of your negative thinking, something we're going to talk about more, and feelings towards other people. Remember, we project. So if I, if I think negative, I project negativity on other people. Our day's in the studio with me this, this morning. You all give him some love. And if I think negatively about myself, this brother don't stand a chance. He don't. He don't stand a chance. You want to know why so many marriages are failing these days? Because if I don't feel like I have any value, if I don't feel like I bring anything to this marriage, if my perspective, if my perspective is skewed towards negativity, all I'm going to do is project what I'm feeling on for, about myself on my partner. And I'm going to do everything I can to prove that they don't bring value either. You bring no value to me. I don't even understand why I married you. I can't believe I made that decision so many years ago. Who do you think you are? And, and all we do is project everything we, we, we believe about ourselves onto that other person. And this is one of the reasons why many marriages struggle. It's just simply, if I, if I don't believe I have value, if I don't believe that I bring value, if I question my value on a personal level, in relationship, in the workplace, on a spiritual level across the board, then I'm going to project that same thing on other people. That's why you got to be very careful who's preaching to you. I'm telling you, man, because all they're going to do is project everything they have going on, all their traumas, all their lack of worth, everything they have going on, all the, all the little hidden things that you don't see. All they're going to do is project that onto you in some level, in some way. The second reason I believe most people don't really know their worth is because they haven't taken the time to get to know themselves. Now, just sit with that. Now, this one I can speak confidently about because whenever I host and I teach the Discover and Live Your Life's Purpose workshop, when it comes to those workshops, typically um, sold out at 20 people, right? So 20 people, that's, that's the max. Typically. Typically, less than 10% of the people that come into that workshop actually truly know themselves. So then if I, if I were to put that across the board, 7.6 billion people on the planet, I can confidently say that 90% of them have no idea who they are. And you, wanna, you wonder why we have the level of chaos that we have, the level of poverty, and all the things. We can point, you can point to a lot of things, oh, we need better prison systems. And I don't mean to rag on that, but since we started the show with that comment, that's not it. The reason you see the chaos, the reason you see the calamity, is because we have people moving around in this life who have failed, even at the mature age of 65, when you technically are supposed to be done with work, technically, because most people are then starting a new career, doing something they never wanted to do, something they never even imagined they would be doing, partly because they've made poor financial decisions all their life. I'm telling you, listen to me this morning, you might be tempted to go somewhere else. But you want to hear this. And so here they are now, mature age, no shade, no judgment. But we reap what we sow. And most of the time, most of the time when you hear that, folks are talking about what you do to other people, but we forget about what we do to ourselves. If you haven't taken the time to really get to know yourself, you could pay for that. We out here trying to get to know everybody else. I ask folks all the time, what are your top three passions, huh? Well, uh, I don't know that I thought about that. But you can name the top five, top ten Billboard songs. What are your What are your top ten talents? But right now, 
You can give me all the stats and all the reasons why the Memphis Grizzlies got eliminated. But you don't know your own top 10 talents. Man, we're distracted. Most folks don't know their worth because they're distracted from themselves. Then when I say, well, tell me your top 10 strengths. Well, aren't talents and strengths the same thing? No, sir. They're different. Well, that's a lot, Linnell. You want me to give you 10 talents and 10 strengths? But they're yours. But they're yours. But they're yours. And you, and, and you, and you wonder why you haven't moved to certain levels in your life. You wonder why you, you question your own value. Because you don't even know you. And, if, and, and I, I said this before. But I can take my iPhone. It's recording right now. But I can take my iPhone and say, well, this is a piece of junk. And somebody else said, man, you know how much you can do with that? But if I don't know it, if, all, if I don't know, I can't take phone calls on it. If I don't know, I can take pictures on it. I know this is a ridiculous example, but this is, this is, how, this is how we live in. If, if, if I don't know that I can do all these things with my iPhone, then I, I, don't, I don't think it's really worth that much. Hey, man, can I buy your iPhone for $5? Yeah, man, you can have it for $5. It ain't worth nothing. And this is how many of us are treating ourselves. I'm going to get to it in a second. Your purpose is your identity, and if you don't know your purpose, you don't know yourself. And that might be one of the reasons why you question your worth. You're supposed to know the reason for your being. But many of us, we just we haven't taken the time. We haven't we haven't been educated properly. Some of us, we have these degrees. We, mo we know the Pythagorean theorem. I know what pi means. 3.14269. Like we can, I know that. But if you ask me my purpose, I'm like, oh, well, uh, I think it's to do what I went to school for. Uh, I, I think that's it. And then we wonder why we have feelings of inferiority in a world that's going to constantly tell you that you don't have enough and you don't have the latest and you don't have the greatest and you don't have the best and you don't drive nice and you don't live nice. Like, how are you going to survive that? And by the way, it's coming from, at you from every angle. Number three, you don't even value your own ideas. See, here's the thing. If you don't know your real worth, that means you also don't understand how much your ideas are worth. Most of us, we've had the idea that will get us out of the situation that we're in. You've had the idea. It's come to you. Somebody, somebody praying right now, like, just, just show me the way out. Let me know what to do. And then the creator plants a little seed in their mind. Well, you could just do X. And then what do you say? Oh, that's a, for a moment, that's a good idea. Then you start to think about how. Well, how would I do X? And before you can even... Before you can even pour water on the seed the creator given you, has given you, because you can't see how, you throw it away. You throw it away. You don't even value your own ideas. Your ideas, see, here's the thing. Your ideas are gold. If you treated your ideas as like gold, let me, let me just say this. Everything about me, everything about me started with an idea. Everything you know about me started with an idea. Even the woman I'm married to started with the idea that I could get her. <laughs> I bet you if 
I really put my, I really went all in. I can get with her. It was an idea. Some folks are married to their, to their, what do you call it? Default choice. Yikes. That just hurt when I said it. Because you passed up all the other ideas because it just didn't seem like, you know, because you questioned your own worth. And, and, and the conversation right now, if you're a young person, man, like, like, take this, take this. What did Solomon say? Bind it, bind it across your neck like a chain of gold and hold on. Because that's what we're going to do in the next hour. Number four is you don't trust yourself. See, if I, don't, if I don't believe that I hold any value, if I question my value, and if I don't know myself, <clears throat> then it becomes incredibly difficult for me to trust myself. Now, let me give you an example. Right now, somebody that we don't know walked into the studio, and they said, I have something really powerful I want to say. Can you turn on my mic? It's very possible I would look at Justin, the tech, technical producer. Justin's a big man. Justin, you're about what, 6'5"? 6'6". 6'6". Okay, he's 6'6". Six, six. How, how much do you weigh, brother? 280. 280. I would ask Justin, whose job, whose job is not to uh, physically handle anybody, but I would ask him to politely, if he can, remove them from the studio, right? And if he can't do it politely, I would say, brother, I got your back. I will pay your attorney expenses. I'm going to need you to get them out. Okay? And he seems happy about that, right? <laughs> okay? Why? Because we don't trust them. Why don't we trust them? Because we don't know them. Here's the thing. If you don't know yourself, you're not going to trust yourself. Let me say it again. If, man, like... Two plus two equals four. I hope this is making sense. This is why purpose matters so much. I know somebody thinking everything comes back to purpose with Linnell, but you got to understand why. You have to understand why. If you don't trust yourself, then you're not going to trust nobody else, number one. I don't even trust myself. So this is, this is how it goes in relationships, right? I don't know why I keep coming back to relationships. It's the best example. And I'm doing a lot of relationship work these days. But if I don't trust myself with women, right, I don't trust myself with women, guess who I'm not going to trust with men? Just take, a, just, take a, just take a wild guess. Somebody put it in the comments. Like, if Linnell Harris doesn't trust himself with women, guess who he's not going to trust with men? My wife, I'm not going to trust her every time. I, what, are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where you going? Why? Because I already said it. I already said it. But the way cognitive distortions work is there are biased perspectives we project onto ourselves. So I know this about myself already. Right. I know how I get down. But then I project it onto myself and those around us. I don't care. I don't care. You had a flat tire. You, you, you have to let that man fix your car. You know, did you know him? I heard it. I heard a joke the other day. I actually sent it to my wife. There's a joke, and it and it goes like this: A man calls his wife, and he says, "Honey, I just got into a bad car accident. Um, it was horrible. I'm in the hospital now. I'm okay, but I broke three of my ribs, my left leg, and my right arm. But thank God for Paula. Paula drove me to the to the hospital. I'm here now." And I believe I'm going to be okay. What's the first thing his wife says? Who is Paula? <laughs> now you feel better, baby. You, go, you all right? You in pain? Who is Paula? Right? But, again, we project these things onto the people around us. All right. So how do I trust myself? I got to get to know myself. I told, I'm going to give you answers for each one of these. But how do I begin to trust myself? I have to get to know myself. 
I'm going to tell you now, I know Linnell Harris better than anybody else on the planet. My wife might say she knows me better than I'm myself, I know myself, but that's not true. I, I, I know myself better than anybody else on the planet, and I, and I continue to do work to know myself. Why is that important? Because then when the creator plants an idea in my mind, I trust that I can deliver on it. Now, I started to say before the, before the break that everything about me is an idea. And I went to my wife. That's because of an idea. Insp- inspirational perspective was an idea. You all, it, I mean, I, I really want you all to get this, right? It was an idea. This inspired T-shirt was an idea. The hat was an idea, okay? All of these things were ideas. My businesses started as ideas. See, people look, sometimes they'll look at you and say, man, he's lucky. I've heard this before. I've had somebody tell me to my face, you ain't nothing but lucky. You ain't nothing but lucky. But see, it takes more than luck. You got to trust yourself you got to value your own ideas. All these things matter, and this is why your level of worthiness matters. This is why if anybody's listening right now, it's not because you're not valuable for the, the current context and situation that you're in, be- before the circumstances and situations of your life. It's not that you're not valuable. It's not that you're not worthy. It's the per- perspective and the belief that you're not worthy that's driving it all. Because you have everything that you need. Fifth reason I know many people don't believe they have worth is because they're afraid to really dream and cast a vision for their life. I want to talk to my brothers right now. And I'm talking to my brothers. I'm not overlooking the sisters, but I experience this the most with men. There are men who have been so beat down, who have worked so hard just to stay even, that, the, that like, it, it feels like going after the dream is a distraction. Linnell, Man, I I don't have time to dream, brother. I have children to take care of. I have a wife to satisfy. It feels like I can barely do those things. Whenever I feel like I'm doing it right, I feel like I get pushed two steps back. And then here you are asking me what's possible. Man, I don't even know if putting food on the table in the next month is going to be possible. How can you ask me what my dreams are? And I want to say to you, man, I understand. I I understand. Many of us have taken a gut punch. We've taken punch after punch. Got an email from another listener who just recently got laid off. Laid off, you know, laid off in an environment of inflation right now. I mean, I, I can only imagine what that feels like. I can only imagine what that does to a person's psyche. I can only imagine what's going through their mind right now. How can you how can you tell me that I'm worthy when they the people who I've been working for day after day, evening after evening, grave shifts showing up, doing what I know to do, and they don't even see me as worthy to show up anymore. They drop me off for reasons that don't even make sense. I got a pink slip. And the guy who doesn't do even half as much as work, work as me still has a job. How can I feel valuable? How can I feel worthy? And so what happens is we begin to take these things and we use them as proof that dreaming doesn't matter. That casting a vision won't get me there. And this is what I have to say to you. You can never, ever climb out unless you dream. 
you will always be in the grind unless you dream. You will, you will always barely be getting by, brother, unless you cast a vision. Because if, if you're just getting by right now, then consider that you're failing on the possibilities that God has for you in your life. I mean, look at the ocean, an abundance of water. Just look outside your window, even in the city, an abundance of trees, an abundance of green, an abundance of grass, an abundance of birds, an abundance of insects. That's who we serve. And if you're not experiencing an abundance, then consider there's an opportunity to just spiritually realign. That's all. That's it. Because when you gain that level of spiritual alignment, I'm going to tell you, he's going to start to put visions into your spirit and put ideas into your mind that will help you escape the daily grind. But, but first, first, you have to get in relationship with yourself. You, you can't say you don't have time. For those of us who are in relationship, the, the, the only reason we got in relationship is because we carved out the time to get to know somebody else. And maybe it's time for you to create that same space for yourself. What's your purpose? See, many, I honestly believe many of us are grinding, many of us are operating beneath our capacity because we're not even in the right lane. What's your purpose? Maybe you weren't designed to throw bags. Maybe, maybe your purpose on the planet, the reason you're just getting by right now is because you, you, you weren't designed to pick up boxes and, and put them on, on a trailer. Like, that's not what you were designed for. And so that's the reason why you're just getting by because you're supposed to be doing something bigger and greater than that. And by the way, by the way, there's nothing wrong with throwing boxes. There's nothing wrong with throwing bags. But just maybe I did it. There was a there was a season in my life where I did that. But have you overstayed your season? See, some of us overstayed our season because we were looking for security, which is the exact thing we don't have now. Some of us overstayed our welcome because we were given the next idea, but we got afraid. We allow fear to run the show instead of the spirit. So now... You're looking at current circumstance and you're using that to measure your level of value. You're using the way the boss talks to you or your coworkers act towards you to, level, to, to measure your level of value. But it's not about them. You're not even supposed to be there. Which is why they don't understand you. Which is why they don't get you. And maybe it's time just to say a prayer and ask the creator, what idea did I pass up on? Please just give me that seed again. Give me the faith. Give me the belief. But first and foremost, give me clarity of purpose. Help me fully understand my identity. So that the dream that I cast, the vision that I have for my life is fully aligned with where you intend for me to go. Because when you have a vision and a dream that's fully aligned with where the creator intends for you to go, you can't help but experience success. Number six. <clears throat> One of the reasons I believe many people operate well beneath their worth, really don't know their worth, is because they rarely affirm themselves and they rarely affirm themselves in their verbal and mental communications. Now let's unpack this. 
Most people will call themselves stupid before they call themselves smart. I just want, I, I mean, you might say, well, Linnell, I just say it in jest. Yeah, but your words have power. Your words have creative capacity. And so now that's sitting in your subconscious, and when it's time to be intelligent, you feel certain levels of anxiety. When it's time to step forward and, and show the world who you are, you get incredibly nervous. It's because you've already hijacked your own mind. Every time something goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just an idiot. You rarely affirm yourself. You rarely pour, you, you rarely pour into yourself. And so mentally and verbally, how you communicate with yourself is incredibly poor. As a matter of fact, if you communicated with someone else the way you communicated with yourself, you would have no friends. You would have no spouse. You would have no loved ones. Even your family would put boundaries around you. If, if in fact, you communicated with them the way you communicate with yourself. We got to begin to understand that we are creators. And the first place that you begin to create is within you. And so if you don't affirm yourself, if you, if you use your words loosely, mentally and verbally, then consider that it may have planted seeds that cause you to feel inferior, that cause you to actually believe that you lack worth. And it's time to turn it around. It's time to turn it around. You are worthy because you breathe. You are worthy because you breathe. Well, Linnell, man, you, brother, you seem, man, incredibly intelligent. I listen to you every Sunday. You know, God hasn't given me a perspective like that, an IQ like that. You know, yeah, I don't have that. Well, maybe this is not what you're supposed to do. But what makes you think that wherever you are mentally, wherever you are intellectually, that you cannot serve at a high level and make a tremendous impact, an impact over and beyond what I'm making? See, that's the thing, man. We're constantly comparing ourselves. And the reason we compare ourselves comes back to purpose. Because you don't know your purpose, you lack identity. What if at the age of 40, I was still down on myself because I couldn't play ball like Michael Jordan? You know, that don't make sense. See, you know, people say, well, that don't make sense. But some of us are doing that right now to ourselves in other capacities. What if it, even now? As a speaker, I'm always down on myself and comparing myself to, to Bishop T.D. Jakes. Every show I listen to is like, you know, I can never be as articulate as him. And, you know, oh, I'm just comparing myself. You think I've been on the radio nine years, I compare myself to that brother? I'm not him. He's not me. That's not my identity. It's not my purpose. We serve two different purposes, maybe similar but different. This is where it's time. If this is you, it's time to create an affirmation practice. Turn, turn, turn the page differently. You notice that you notice that habit to say something de deprecating to yourself. Now it's time to say, nope, that's not true. Now it's time to write down affirmations. I am happy and grateful that I'm made in the image of God and that he loves me. I'm happy and grateful that I'm intelligent. I'm happy and grateful that I'm created exactly for his purpose. Number seven. This is a big one. Number seven. One of the reasons, listen to me, listen to me. Share the stream right now so somebody can pick it up. Somebody can catch this. Text somebody right now. Tell them, turn to WVON, 1690 AM this morning. It, it, I, I want you to hear what Linnell is saying. I'm going, going to do it. I'm giving you a moment to do it. Number seven. 
of the reasons, 10 reasons I believe most people don't believe they're worthy. See, I just got off this comparison thing. Let me show you how it goes. Number seven, you connect your personal esteem and value to external things and other folks' brands. Now, I'm going to deal with this one, right, because some of us, like, we, 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 we're, we're not just comparing ourselves, but it is a consistent and everyday realignment of why I'm not worthy. And then some of us, we have the brands, we got the clothes, we got the cars, we have the houses, And it has buried us in a way that we know our our spirit is drowning. Our spirit is being strangled right now. We can't we can't get any air because every time we try to get air. They drop a new vehicle. Or our dad and his family buy a bigger house. (sighs) Or. They drop a new bag. I mean, you're you're strangled by this. You can't you can't get loose because your personal esteem and value to external things is is caught up in external things and brand. Like I gotta have it, and the reason I gotta have it is because when I have it, I walk different. I talk different. I show up different. Oh, when I pull up in that car, I mean, even if I'm at Target, I just get out the car different. And if that gets taken from me, everything crumbles. Woo. Woo. Can you imagine living under that type of pressure? Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine if every Sunday I had to have on a, a new T-shirt? You know, I had to have a Gucci shirt on one Sunday, and then the next Sunday I had to have an off-white shirt. And then the the next Sunday, I mean, can you imagine that pressure? I got to have a Jordan shirt. I mean, I always got to show up for y'all. And by the way, you don't care. It's all me. It's all me. It's my belief. It's my perception. And I'm drowning myself. I'm drowning my family in debt so I can show up. I got to have, you know, a new pair of earrings. It's Sunday. I got to. They saw the diamonds last week. I need the gold this week. Can you imagine? And what and, and, and what you're living attached to are things. And these things provide you a sense of value. And if they're ever taken... You'll fall into a deep depression. You'll you'll completely completely lose sight of your worth. Somebody right now, this has already happened to. And right now you're struggling. Right now you're depressed. Right now you're down. Right now you don't believe that you're worth anything. Because you can't buy what you used to buy. You can't have what you used to have. You can't do what you used to do. You can't post the way you used to post on social media. And and you've been believing a lie that you're not worth anything anymore. And you're worthy because you breathe. Don't you know, you all, we've all read the books. I'm reading a good book right now. In this book, the emperor, he wants to mingle with the people. And so he puts on this, they call it a steel suit, and he puts on this suit, and he makes sure it's tattered, by the way, right? So that way he can blend in. And then he puts on a cloak and a hood, and the, and the cloak has a hood. You know, the cloak, you know, the, it has, uh, <clears throat> you know, these, you know, it's tattered and it's worn. Do you think, do you think, a real true king loses his value based on what he's wearing, what he's wearing. You think a real true queen 
feels like she loses her value based on the brand? You, I mean, do you, do you think that in any way it shifts who they be internally? Guess, guess what's going to happen if a true king is seen in rags? If, if somebody recognizes a true queen in rags, guess, guess how people respond? Your Excellency, I, I didn't know that was you. My Lord, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't know that was you. Why? Because it has nothing to do with the brand. It has nothing to do with what they wear. It has nothing to do with what they drive. It's who they be. It's who they be. Some of us are so caught up, man, in things, you don't realize the real worth is who you be. Who you be for the young people. Who you be for others. Who you be for your spouse. Who you be for your children. That matters more than anything. How do you get out of this? Again, you have to remember that purpose drives your identity. I, be, I believe in my purpose so much, I created my own brand. You don't got to wear it. I don't care if anybody wears it, I'm going to wear it. I even told Slayer Goals, well, what can I buy that? I said, you know, I don't even know. I, I, I'm like, I'm not really in the apparel business. I'm in the purpose business. You feel me? But some of us are so messed up that when our brother starts a brand, we won't even buy from him because I much, I, I much, I much prefer to buy a Gucci shirt with a Gucci stamp that's made from the same T-shirt company as my brother. I'm going to wear that because people need to know that I can afford a $200 T-shirt. That don't make sense because when you wash a white $200 T-shirt, it ain't worth nothing after that. Don't even wear the same. I saw, I saw this video, brother dropped his hat. His hat, he had a Gucci hat. His, his Gucci hat fell off in the lake. He jumped in. Now, I'm a good swimmer. I, this hat blow off, I'm just going to order another one. But you just guess what that tells me? If you had to jump in the lake to get the hat, you couldn't afford it. You put that much value? God help us. Number eight. Listen to me. One of the reasons, the eighth reason, I believe most people don't really know their worth is because they rarely pray meditate and connect with the creator you can't show me someone who is fully connected with yah on high who has self confidence issues like i mean i mean truly deeply connected and if they do <clears throat> Let me be clear. If they do, they are still making an impact. Like if they suffer some level of trauma that has them pushing like, I don't feel like I'm worthy. They're still making an impact because they gain their worthiness from the creator. I know you don't feel like you're worthy, but I need you to go do X. Okay, Lord, they go do it. They make an impact. And then they'll even tell you, like, I, you know, I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure that people were going to receive this. You know, I, I didn't really know if uh, this would land. And, you know, and, and you talk to this person, you're like, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Because let me be clear. I mean, it's okay to struggle with self-confidence. It doesn't mean you're not connected. What shows me you're not connected is when you don't do the work. Because in order to maintain your connection, you have to operate with integrity. You have to do what you've been told. And this is one of the reasons I believe, let me talk to my spiritual folks, to my Christians, even to my Muslims and the rest, right? 
let me talk to you right quick. You cannot stay in spiritual alignment if you've been told to take action and you refuse. Like, it's not possible. You're out of integrity. You cannot, you cannot maintain your power. You can't do it. If you've been told, hey, go do X, and then after X, I want you to do Y and Z, and you don't move. You can't even do X and not Y and Z and stay in alignment. Some of us, we go halfway. Okay, I, I did the first part. Because what's going to happen is as you connect, it's going to keep coming back to you. So now you got, and I know this from experience. Cause so now I'm praying, I'm meditating, I'm connecting. I was told to do X, Y, Z. I only did X. Guess what keeps coming up? Go do Y. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Go do Y. This is how I was leaving corporate America. I don't believe I would be here today if I, haven't, if I didn't leave corporate America. I wouldn't. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe I would be able to serve at this capacity in my purpose if I hadn't left. It was part of the X, Y, Z I was told to do. See, and, and, and some of us right now, you've been told, I got you. Leave. And you haven't left. And you're, wonder, you're wondering why you're battling self-esteem issues. You wonder why you're battling, fit, fit, battling feelings of unworthiness because you're not connected anymore. It's time to reconnect. There is nothing more important than the connection to the creator. That, that supplies my worthiness. That provides my self-esteem. That provides my confidence. I can walk into almost any room because I know I'm aligned. But if I'm not aligned, all of a sudden, I start to feel like a leak, a power leak. Start struggling with things I didn't struggle with before. You got to ask yourself, are you praying? Are you meditating? Are you connecting? It's hard, it's hard to read certain scriptures and text and not feel good about yourself. It's, I mean, it, it's, you're like, wow, for me? <laughs> That's something. It, it's hard to read it and act out too. Because you're getting the instruction that you need. And I'm not talking about following rules. See, because we get we get this we get this kind of you know. Those of us who are incredibly religious, we believe the rules keep us intact. No, man, the rules were made by some 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 man or some woman, some dude. That has nothing to do with your spiritual connection. Okay, you follow the rules; they make you so you can stay a part of the group. But what did the Creator say? Maybe he told you to leave. But that's my social community. That's where I find my worth. <sighs> this one is simple. If you battle with levels of worthiness based on your connection to the creator, it's time to reconnect. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something, man. There is nothing more important. Let me just share this. <clears throat> There's no way I could have left corporate America without, without God's help. There's, there's no way. It, there, there's just no way. Because, and, and again, this is how the system is set up. The way the system is set up, we're made, we're made to put our faith and trust in men, and that's what the job is. It's created by a man. There's an owner somewhere, and if there's not an owner, there's a board or a group of men that own that company. And they're men and women who are making decisions for the health of that company. 
And we've seen companies we never thought would fall, fall. I can go down the list of companies that have fallen from financial firms all the way down to entertainment companies. There's somebody working at AMC, an executive probably, thinking I got a, I got a secure role. And they're like, oh, you're supposed to go do this. You're supposed to go, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Then 2020 came, and they got let go. Because a man somewhere said, oh, we got we to gotta let you go. So if I'm going to get held down, I want to be held down by the creator. When it came time for me to leave corporate America, that's the one thing. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. That was the one thing that gave me faith is that God is my source. Everything that I've been given was not given to me by a man. He might have used a man. He might have used a woman, but it wasn't given to me by them. He, what, they said the, the king's heart is in the Lord's hand. He turned their hearts and allowed them to give me what they gave me. So when he tells me it's time to go, it's time to go. Now I look back seven years ago. Oh, I'm so happy I left. See, this is the other thing about us, and this is why we have to depend on the creator, because we don't really understand the present situation. We don't really understand present circumstances. We don't really get it, but he does. And because he does, when he's telling you to move, it's time to move. Stay connected. By all means, stay connected. Stay connected. And I, I firmly believe for some of us who are more mature, you've done the work. You know your purpose. You know your identity, but you still struggle with matters of worth. It's because you disconnected somewhere. Number eight is for you. Number eight is for you. Are you going to go through trials? Absolutely. Did I go through trials? Absolutely. Did it go the way I thought it would? No. But did God bless me abundantly over and beyond where I would have been? Man, I can't even begin to describe. I can't even begin to describe it. Number nine. You don't see, nor do you believe, you could have a high quality of life. You don't, you don't see it. <clears throat> and because you don't see it, you don't believe it. And if you see it, but you don't believe it, you can't have it because it requires faith and action. And faith is belief plus action. Some of us are caught right now in the belief phase. I believe, but I'm afraid to act. And if you stay there long enough, what will happen is your worthiness will start to come in question. Do I even deserve this? See, now, now number eight, nine, and ten, it's, it's, it's for those of us who, you know, all the rest of this, I was saying it, and you were like, you right, Linnell. You right, Linnell. Now, your, now it's your time. Now it's your time. Because some of us right now, you should be living a higher quality of life, but you lack faith. You lack faith, and it's time just to step. It's time just to step. Step up into a new way of being. But if you can't see it, some of us, we just can't see it. We don't believe it. Some of us, we can't see it because of our trauma. Our trauma has us trapped. And if you don't believe you're worthy, that you should invest in yourself, that you should get yourself fully healed, this goes to the person who's spending all this. How are you going to buy a $200 T-shirt, but you don't get therapy? How are you going to buy a $300 pair of shoes, but you don't get therapy? You're twisted. Something's not right. You got to reassess. How are you going to carry a $1,600 bag, but you don't get therapy? 
I'm talking to somebody. And then you wonder why you struggle with certain things. For some of us, it's all about what we drive. Well, you know, I got to be in this. I got to be in that. But you're broken. And that's why you don't feel worthy. It's time to get healed, man. As a man thinketh, so is he or she. As a man or woman thinketh, so is he or she. This connects to number five, you all. You're afraid to really dream and cast a vision for your life. Number 10. Number 10. I really want you to think about this one. One of the reasons I believe most people don't really know their worth is because of the way they allow others to use and mistreat them. And I just want you, I just want you to take a, an internal assessment. Are you allowing anybody, I mean anybody, to mistreat you, to disrespect you, to walk over you? Linnell, you don't understand. I got to feed this family. I got I to gotta take care of myself. Yeah, but at what cost? At what cost? At what cost? Are you allowing anybody, <clears throat> anybody, I don't care if it's the boss, I don't care if it's a parent, I don't care if it's a sibling, I don't care if it's a spouse, are you allowing anybody to use you and mistreat you? <clears throat> use you and mistreat you. I'm going to go back to the young ladies. Some of us right now, some, there's a young lady listening right now. You're trapped in a, a situationship. You know he's using you. You know he's using your body. And you're just, you just, you call yourself, you're just waiting for him to come around. But if you truly value yourself, <clears throat> the wait is over. You're, you're, you're worth too much. You're too valuable to wait. You're too valuable to be used. You're too valuable for anybody to disrespect you. And it's time that you woke up. It's time that you put a stop to it. It's time that you told him no. A lot of times people out here saying, well, ain't no, you know, ain't no good man. Ain't no good woman, but who are you allowing to be no good? They got to be no good to somebody. <clears throat> are you allowing somebody to use you, mistreat you because when they're around you feel valuable? Your value has nothing to do with anybody else. You are worthy because you breathe. Maybe it's time to cut them off. Maybe it's time to let them go so you can step forward in your power. Maybe one of the reasons you've been stagnant, one of the reasons you've lacked growth is because you've allowed that cancer into your life. And now it's time to let it go. Hey, my inspired peoples, Linnell Harris here, certified ontological coach and trainer. I'm so excited that you're watching the channel. By the way, did you know you can catch the show live at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every Sunday morning? You can. All you have to do is go to my Facebook stream, Coach Linnell Harris, catch the stream live, or you can listen to the radio show via iHeart at WVON 1690 AM. But since you're here, if you love the content, I ask that you share it, like this particular video, and subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having a great day.